Chuck Holton here. Thanks for watching the Hot Zone Podcast. Thank you to all of our new subscribers. Uh, I'm going to bring to you some more footage from Seattle and Portland since I spent all week last week covering that. And I've got so much content. You're not even going to believe some of the stuff I got. I've been kind of getting a lot of publicity. I've been uh, on the Blaze TV, CBN, and a couple other internet shows and that sort of thing, uh, doing a lot of reporting on this stuff. And I think it's because people are just fed up with the mainstream media coverage that tries to paint these as peaceful protests when they're not peaceful protests. When they say mostly peaceful protests, that's like saying that a rattlesnake is mostly safe because the only thing that can hurt you are his fangs. The fangs of these peaceful protests are the Antifa rioters who are coming every night to tear down the courthouse in Portland and to tear up the streets of Seattle. So I did a one hour live Facebook, uh, you know, I did a one hour Facebook live uh, on Saturday at a march that turned into a riot in Seattle. And I'm going to play for you some of the highlights from that day right now, along with some exclusive content that you're not going to see anywhere else. So thanks for watching. So I'm in downtown Seattle. We're coming up to the East Precinct. There's several thousand marchers here. I'm right at the end of the line, the end of the marchers. They've got fallout vehicles even. And some stragglers here. This block that I'm on was part of the Chaz Chop Zone. Here's a memorial. I think this is where one of the guys who was killed here was shot. I think that's why the memorial is here. There's another one down here further. That's several thousand people there. It's a lot. You guys live around here? Wow. So what they're what they're doing down there is they've stopped, and they are uh, giving out instructions for you know, hey, we're about to start breaking things, so make sure you hide your face, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to be able to film. Uh, they're not typically. Uh, they're not going to want me to film. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll do the best I can here because they just wreck everything. I mean, look at this wall behind me. They just wreck everything. And I guess when mommy does your laundry, daddy pays your bills, you can exist in your parents' basement as much as you want and not have to pay for anything. I guess things just don't have much value to you. So you can do stuff like this and feel good about it. You can actually feel good about it. This is saving lives here. You're saving lives. You're, you're not defacing public property or destroying the work of other men's hands. You're, you're actually saving lives here. And, uh, so, oh, here they, they're moving again. Let's see if I can go through them. I'm gonna put the phone down. And uh, so it's gonna get kind of shaky for a minute. Let's see here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to move right through the crowd, but I'm gonna have to keep the phone kind of down by my side. Try not to get my arms ripped off. 
Here goes. A lot of people. Look at this graffiti over here. I don't know how long this has been here, but this is a picture I put up the other day of the satanic pentagram symbol. I don't know how long that's been there. It might have been there from before the Chop Jazz thing. So, I have a feeling they're going to keep moving for a while. These are, they, they, they're meeting under the auspices of Black Lives Matter, but it's not Black Lives Matter. This has nothing to do with Black Lives Matter. These are anti-fascist, Antifa, Black Bloc, uh, and anti-capitalist people who are here to, uh, they just, they don't believe in capitalism. As I was coming down to the protest, I saw some police that were uh, sort of paralleling the group here. Um, and I think we should start taking bets on how long it will be before I get uh, accosted, confronted for, uh, for filming. And I'm going to try to avoid that as long as I can, but... They're, uh, it's, it's probably going to happen sooner rather than later. Last week they came down here and they destroyed an Amazon Go store, like, an Amazon, like a Whole Foods kind of satellite store, and uh, several Starbucks. And you think, like, why would they be destroying Starbucks? I mean, Starbucks was founded here in Seattle. It was, it, it's still headquartered here. They've, you know, they're, they're one of the most liberal co uh, companies you could ever hope to find. But somebody went back in the records and found out that years ago, Starbucks had given something like $10,000. It wasn't much. It was just a pittance to the Seattle Police Foundation, which is a foundation that's dedicated to helping the police get better training so that they're better cops and they don't brutalize people. So you'd think that they'd be all for that, but no, nope, you're funding the police. We can't, we can't support that. And so now uh, Starbucks is on the, not only the, the boycott list, but they're literally smashing their stores and uh, all up and down this area in the uh, Chaz Chop Zone. That's got a, that, the, the, the irony of that just blows my mind the irony that they, they eat their own you know these uh these protesters and these radical leftist groups they've got to have somebody to attack all the time they've always got to be attacking somebody and so i mean i'm getting in my car here you'd be very hard pressed to find a conservative down here anywhere in this area of Seattle. Just not gonna happen. This is like the hate Ashbury district of San Francisco. It's the gay the the gay area where all the gay nightclubs are and things like that. And so <laughs> every store you go by has got Black Lives Matter posters, gay pride flags, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, in the 
in the windows as a like a token of please don't you know please don't attack us kind of thing and uh it, it doesn't it doesn't help because they're they're going through and and doing lots of research on every one of those little mom and pop stores one of them they found out that one of the founders of the was a clothing store down there one of the founders had quit the police department to f found this company didn't like being a cop decided to to quit the police department and and found this co this company selling clothes but because he had been a police officer at one point in time they destroyed the store and wrote you know killer cop all over the outside of the store they they smashed it to smithereens they just destroyed it so yeah really unbelievable that, that it just defies irony it really does it, it and the the petulant children running around here in little cutesy black uniforms and bicycle helmets uh you know they're, they're little pink or blue or yellow bicycle helmets and stopping traffic keeping people from telling everybody what to do they've uh, they like to tell me what to do they like to to say oh you can't film here you can't film there you got to go here you got to go there um they don't want to defund the police they want to become the police they want to be the police they want to they want control to exercise control and they have no authority except that which is ceded to them or abdicated to them by the leadership of this city and many cities across America. So this is unfortunately not uh, original or uh, you know not unique to Seattle at all by, by any stretch. Uh, we are seeing this now all across the country. And what a sad, uh, a very sad, very sad state of affairs when, uh, I mean, literally, if they were to see me, I, I've been asked, you know, hey, who are you? What's your name? They want to they look you up. They show me your Facebook profile. I had a lady tell me that the other night. Show me your Facebook. Why? Because she wants to see if I am sufficiently woke. And if not, then I am the enemy. Instagram right here! We have your Instagram up! His Instagram is King Free Speech! King Free Speech! Banned twice on Twitter! Mega supporter! That man right there! With his other goon friends! And it doesn't matter if I'm 90% woke. This is exactly what I have seen in the Middle East. It's exactly what I've seen in the Middle East with ISIS. ISIS will you know, split off from Al Qaeda because Al Qaeda was not extreme enough. And ISIS killed more Muslims than they did anybody else. And they specifically targeted, you know, anybody who wasn't woke enough in the Muslim sense. Uh, and that's, that's exactly what we're seeing here. These people, and look, right now, they're taking hammers and they're smashing windows. They are um, smashing cars. That's why I'm, I'm kind of paralleling the, the group right now. Because, well, they've got the streets blocked off. They, they have a brigade of bicyclists who stop traffic and won't let traffic go by. So I'm trying to keep from getting trapped in their little zone there. Um, because if I do, uh, there's a good chance my car is going to get smashed up. So, all right, that's all I've got for today, folks. Uh, we're going to have more footage from these riots in Seattle and Portland, because I've, like I said, got so much coverage of that and a lot of stuff that is not being shared on the evening news. I promise you that. So get ready. If you want to support the podcast, if you want to support what we're doing, 
uh, you can go to patreon.com slash hot zone and you can subscribe for only $3 a month there or more if you like. And, or you can go to paypal. Uh, uh, let's see, paypal.me slash EVMT. Paypal.me slash EVMT and donate that way. But if you want to get a tax deduction, what I would suggest is that you go to victormarks.com slash hot zone. And that way you're donation can be tax deductible. We're going to use this money to try to help people. It's kind of hard it, right now covering these protests to find people that need help because these kids that are protesting, they don't need help. The people that need help are the officers on the inside of those buildings that have been laid siege to for now two months. And I'm working behind the scenes to try to get an actual embed with those federal agents. And so I'll let you know how it goes. We'll talk to you later.